New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. I'm scared. Take it easy. Have you got your gun? I'm all set. Nick, is it... I'm not positive, Betsy. But if my hunch is right, it's the murderer we've been looking for. Now for the case of the hermit thrush. Today's exciting adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by a new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Our story begins outside an imposing edifice which 70 years ago was considered beautiful and luxurious. Today, with its boarded windows and air of decay, it is ugly and ominous. A tall, distinguished-looking man stands on the dark porch of the mansion, banging away with the heavy bronze knocker. Mr. Kavanaugh! Miss Jewel, open the door! Mr. Kavanaugh, do you hear me? Hey, you! What? What's going on up there? Oh, policeman, good. Don't you know what's the middle of the night? Able to try and sleep, and here you are. Officer, you've away. got to help me get into this house. Are you crazy? That's Mr. Otis Cavanaugh's house. Nobody goes in there. But, officer, Mr. I... Mr. Cavanaugh locked himself up in there 15 years ago, and he's never come out. I know that, And what's but... more, he don't let nobody in. Nobody except his housekeeper and his lawyer. But I'm Otis Cavanaugh's lawyer, Leonard Kelsey. What? You say you're his lawyer? Yes, and I've got to get inside this house, even if I have to break in. Well, you're not breaking in, mister, not as long as I've got anything to say about it. But I'm afraid Mr. Kavanaugh has met with foul play of some kind. Well, what makes you think that? I phoned here half an hour ago, officer. Eleanor Drew, that's Mr. Kavanaugh's housekeeper, answered the phone. So what? She was very excited. She said that she and Mr. Kavanaugh had been quarreling, and she refused to let me speak to him. Yeah? Then when I called back a few minutes later, no one answered the phone. Well... That is funny, seeing as how Mr. Kavanaugh never goes out of the house. Officer, please. Miss Drew is a woman of violent temper. She hates Mr. Kavanaugh, even though she continues to work for him. We, we've got to get in there, I tell you. She, she may have killed him. Did you try the door? Oh, of course not. It's always kept locked. Officer, I am... Wait. The door ain't locked now. What? Hey, maybe something funny is going on in here. Come on, let's have a look. Here, let me, let me find the light. Here it is. Now we can... Here. Good Lord. Holy smoke. It's... It's Miss Drew. And it looks like you've been worrying about the wrong party. It's the housekeeper that's met with foul play, Mr. Kelsey. She's been murdered. But, Mr. Kelsey, from what you tell me, the identity of the murderer is quite clear. His identity, yes, but not his whereabouts. In other words, all you want Nick to do is to find out his Kavanaugh. Is that it, Mr. Kelsey? Precisely, Miss Booth. The police are quite capable when it comes to locating missing persons, Kelsey. Especially in a case like this. There can't be many places where Otis Cavanaugh can hide. Why do you say that, Miss Booth? Well, after all, he's been cut off from everybody for the last 15 years. I remember hearing about him when I was a kid. Yeah, he locked himself up in that old place because of a broken heart, didn't he? Yes, uh, Mr. Cavanaugh was jilted by the young woman he intended to marry. He's been a recluse ever since. Oh, wasn't he also just beginning a career as a singer? I know the tabloids always refer to him as the hermit thrush. That's right. It was on the concert stage. Billed as a high society tenor. Yes, that's right. And now he's wanted for murder. <laughs> Gee, what a wasted career. Yes, yes. But, uh, Mr. Carter, I, I think it's tremendously important that Otis be found quickly. You do? Why? Frankly, to prevent more murders. I don't believe Otis Kavanaugh is sane. No? No. No man who locks himself in a gloomy mansion and refuses to come out can be in full possession of his faculties. But... And I'm very much afraid that Otis' derangement has become permanent and violent. Well, then there's real danger if he isn't caught. That's exactly my point, Miss Booth. Oh. What do you say, Mr. Carter? Very well, Mr. Kelsey. I'll do my level best to find him. And I hope it won't be too late. So that's the Kavanaugh Mansion. Hmm. How long has this house been voted up this way, Kelsey? Why, ever since Otis went into seclusion. 
And you and Miss Drew were the only ones that saw him in all those 15 years, huh? The only ones, yes. Oh, there's Sergeant Madison, Nick. Oh, hi, Matty. Well, I'll be... What are you doing here? Why, Mr. Kelsey here hired me to lend a hand on the Drew killing. Any objections? A lot of good it'd do me to object. Okay, come on in. <laughs> Thanks, Matty, for the cordial invitation. Oh, this is really a dirty old place, isn't it? Yeah, this Drew Dane may have called herself a housekeeper, but, brother, she never kept house. She was out as private secretary, as cook, and as nurse as well. <laughs> and how she hated him. Huh? She hated him? Yet she continued to work for him? It's rather odd. Well, although Otis was a recluse, he wasn't a miser, Mr. Carter. He paid her very well. I see. Well, where's the body, Matty? In the next room, Nick. Uh, come on, I'll show you. You sent out an alarm for Kavanaugh? Yeah, we got every man on the force on the lookout for him. Any chance that he's hiding somewhere in the house? We searched every inch of the joint from top to bottom. He's not in here. Well, here she is. Hmm. Got it right through the heart, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, how horrible. Matty. Yeah, Nick? You have any reason to believe it wasn't Kavanaugh who killed her? Nick, there's only one way it adds up. Now, look. Kavanaugh don't budge out of the house for 15 years, and then when he does blow, he leaves a body behind. To me, it's open and shut. Well, that sounds reasonable, Nick. Especially since Mr. Kelsey spoke to Miss Drew just a few moments before she died, and she and Kavanaugh were having a quarrel. You know what they were quarreling about, Kelsey? No, she didn't say. Hmm. Hey, why'd you call Kavanaugh? Oh, it was about his monthly annuity check. His annuity check? Yes, yes. Mr. Kavanaugh's father left his money tied up in trust, and Otis received an annuity. Well, why call so late at night? <laughs> Time meant nothing to Mr. Kavanaugh, and uh, I'd been working late at my office, so I phoned to see whether he'd mind if I stopped by with his check and saved me a trip tomorrow morning. Well, couldn't you have mailed it? Oh, no, no. Otis Kavanaugh always insisted that I deliver it to him in person. Uh-huh. Matty, did you find the murder weapon? No, not a sign of it, Nick. What about fingerprints? Boys are working on them. We'll have a report by morning. Good. Well, looks as if the only question is where Kavanaugh could be hiding. Uh, well, I might make one guess. We found this in Miss Drew's pocketbook. Why, it's a telegram. Now, let's see. It's addressed to Otis Kavanaugh. Yeah. It says, arriving steamship Montevideo Monday. Monday? Well, that's today. We'll go straight to Granger's tourist camp on Highway 47. Must see you. Signed, Oliver. Oliver? Who's Oliver, Kelsey? Why, uh... I, I don't know, Mr. Carter. I never heard Mr. Kavanaugh mention anyone by that name. Uh, well, whoever he is, what made him think Kavanaugh would leave the house even to meet him somewhere? I don't know, Matty. But there's one place where we might get the answer. Sure. Granger's tourist camp. Right. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, Matty. Step on it. Look, Nick, I got her up to 60 now. I want to get there in one piece. Okay. But if you hadn't been so bullheaded about phoning headquarters before we left the Kavanaugh place, we... Nick, how many times do I have to tell you? I ain't one of you private eyes. When I start going places, I gotta let people know. Well, I suppose you're right, Matty. Nick, what do you expect to find when you do get to this camp? Oh, it's Kavanaugh, I hope. Maybe we should have brought Kelsey along to identify him, huh? If you don't mind, I'd rather work without Kelsey around. Why? You think he's mixed up in this? I didn't say that. Ah, Nick, the whole deal's as plain as the nose on my face. Kavanaugh and the dame had a fight. Kavanaugh plugged her and then beat it. And that's that. Maybe, Matty. Maybe. But then again... The Matty, look out! Huh? Those headlights coming out from that side road. Slow down, Matty. He's cutting right out in oh, front of us. No. Oh, that, that's darn... Oh, Nick, he's shooting at us! Watch it, you two! <laughs> tire shot out from under him, Matty tries to control the careening automobile, but it's too late, and with Nick and Patsy huddled together in the back seat, the speeding car plunges into the ditch at the side of the road. We'll see what happens next in just a minute. And now back to the case of the Hermit Thrush, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. As we pick up our story, Nick, Patsy, and Sergeant Matheson are just recovering from the shock of having their car skid off the road at high speed. Patsy. Um, oh. Patsy, are you all right? I, I think so, Nick. Well, I ain't all right. <laughs> Look at this bump on my head. Oh, golly. <sighs> well, thank heaven whoever was shooting at us wasn't a better shot. I don't think those shots were meant to kill us. 
Huh? I was supposed to delay our arrival at Granger's camp. Well, they certainly succeeded. We'll have to wait until morning to get out of this ditch. We can't wait until morning. I don't want to take a chance of having a homicidal maniac like Kavanaugh running around loose. Well, maybe we can hitch a ride after Granger's. That's just what we're going to do, Maddie. If necessary, we'll commandeer a ride. Come on. Are you the proprietor of this tourist camp? Yes, that's right. I'm Robert Granger. Well, my name's Nick Carter. This is Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad. Yeah, we're looking for a man who may have checked in here sometime yesterday. Uh, what was your fellow's name? Oliver. Uh, was that his last name? I don't know. You have a register? Yeah, sure. Here's, here's a book. Here are the folks that came in yesterday. See anything, Nick? Yes, Niles. Oliver Niles. And that's the only Oliver here. Where is he, Nick? In, um, like a cabin 26. Uh, 26. 26 is straight on back. Last one to your left. Thanks, Granger. Okay, we shall see what we shall see. <laughs> Mr. Niles! Mr. Niles! Huh? No soap, Nick. Nobody in there. Well, there ought to be. The lights are on. Well, how about looking in the window? I guess we better. Nick, you don't think we're too late, do you? I hope not. We can see in through this window, Nick. Uh-huh. Have you seen him? <gasps> oh, Nick. Holy smoke. There's a guy laying on the floor. And would you look at his face? Well, that answers your question, Patsy. We are too late. That man's dead. Say, you're not sure whether this man is Oliver Niles, Ranger. No, no, I ain't, Mr. Carter. You sure can't tell much from his face. Uh, not after somebody shot him point blank with a shotgun. Oh, it's awful. Uh, hasn't been dead more than an hour, Nick. Only there was some sort of identification on him. Take a look around, will you, Patsy? Go through everything. See what you can find. Okay, Nick, I'll look. I don't get it, Nick. We already know who he is. Do we? Why, he was Oliver Niles, of course. It's perfectly clear what happened. Yeah? What? Sure. Kavanaugh found out where we were heading and beat us to the punch. Took a, a couple of pot shots at us on the road and came out here and knocked off Niles. But why, Matty? Why? Well, What's he up to? I don't know. He probably don't know that himself. Didn't you yourself call him a homicidal maniac? Nick? Yes, what is it, Patsy? Nick, look. Huh? He was in his bed. Under his pillow. Uh-oh. A watch. Let me see. Well, well, well. Something engraved on it, Nick? Yes. From M.V. To O.C., Christmas, 1932. O.C.? Why, that stands for Otis Cavanaugh. Well, well, Maddie, what's this do to your neat little theory? Oh, brother, it knocks it into a cocked hat. Nick, this guy ain't Oliver Niles at all. It's Otis Cavanaugh. Oh, boy, we finally caught up with him. <laughs> Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Oh, Miss Bowen, this is Leonard Kelsey. I've just come from the morgue. Oh, yes, Mr. Kelsey. Will you tell Mr. Carter that there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever about the man's identity? It is Otis Kavanaugh. I see. Well, thanks, Mr. Kelsey. I'll tell him. Thank you. <sighs> well, Nick, it looks as though you're out of a job. Kelsey identified him, huh? Uh-huh. Huh. And since we were hired just to find Kavanaugh, it looks as though we were about to be fired. Patsy, I don't like it. Don't like it one little bit. What do you mean? It doesn't add up. There's something wrong someplace. I don't see what's wrong. No? Tell me again what happened, Patsy. Start from scratch and I think you will see. Well, uh, Kavanaugh had a quarrel with Eleanor Drew and killed her. Yeah, go on. Then he lit out for the tourist camp, planning to lie low there. When he found out we were heading for the same place, he tried to stop us. But how but... did he find out where we were going? What? Gee... I don't know. And why didn't he kill us when he had the chance? Well, And I... why did Niles shoot Kavanaugh in the face with a shotgun? Do killers usually do that? No, of course not, no, but... No, 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 no. Now, Patsy, there are too many holes. Too many murders and attempted murders for no apparent reason. <sighs> There's something missing. I want to find what that's... Wait something... a minute. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. It's me, Patsy. Let me talk to Nick. Oh, just a second. Here, Nick, it's Sergeant Matheson. Oh, thanks. Hiya, Matty. 
I suppose you know Leonard Kelsey identified the body, Nick. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I just thought I'd check with you before I gave the story to the papers. Hey, Matty, what yeah. about the fingerprints? Uh, fingerprints? Yes, you have a report on the ones your boys found in the Cavanaugh house? Oh, those, yeah. Any of them drive with the dead man's? No, they don't, Nick. None of them? No. Nope. I don't see why you're getting so hot and bothered about that. After all, the body's been identified by the man who knew Cavanaugh best. Look, Matty. And what's one? Huh? How could Cavanaugh live in that place for 15 years and not leave a single fingerprint? Hey, you got something there. I think I have. And I don't think we've found Otis Cavanaugh. Gee, Nick, this Cavanaugh mansion is even spookier in the daytime than it is at night. Well, don't worry. We're only going to be here long enough to take a look through Cavanaugh's private papers. To see if we can find out who is Oliver Niles, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. This looks as though it might have been a study. In here. <gasps> What's the matter? That window there, that crack in the shutter. Oh. Oh, Nick, I could have sworn there was a man's eyes looking in at us. Well, there's no one there now. Yeah. Well, maybe this creepy old house is making me see things. Forget it. Okay. All right, let's have a look in this file cabinet. Oh, my goodness, Nick. Millions of papers. Mm. It'll take us forever to go through all those. And they're all old, too. Turning yellow, in fact. Yeah. Oh, here's a scrapbook, Nick. Oh? Yeah, let me look at it. Those are reviews. The critics' comments on Cavanaugh's debut as a concert singer. Uh-huh. And back here are some society columns. Huh? Oh, here's a picture of the whole family on a yacht. I wonder which one's Otis. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Reading from left to right. Mrs. Roger Hobart, Mr. Roger Hobart, Mr. and Mrs. James Niles. Niles? Yes, and the two sons, Mr. Oliver Niles and Mr. Otis Cap... Otis Cavanaugh. Yes, they're two sons? What, what does that mean? Just what it says. Mr. and Mrs. James Niles and their two sons. Mr. Oliver Niles and Mr. Otis Cavanaugh. Then Oliver Niles and Otis Cavanaugh were half-brothers. Right. Otis Cavanaugh's mother must have been married twice, the second time to a man named James Niles. Of course, Nick. Look at that picture. Otis and his half-brother look very much alike. They certainly do. Good heavens, Nick. This means that the man we found at the tourist camp could have been Oliver Niles. Yes, could have been that. It also explains how Kelsey could have been mistaken. Patsy, it may explain a lot of things. Oh, Nick, we've got to find Otis Cavanaugh. If we don't... Oh, 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 Just a uh, telephone. Uh, but, but, but. Oh, but, but who could be calling up here? I don't know. Well, I'm going to find out. I wonder where that phone is. It's over there, in the alcove under the stairs. Oh, yes, I see it. I'll get it. Hello? I warn you to give up your investigation, Carter. Who is this? If you don't, you'll meet the same fate my housekeeper met. Your housekeeper? Yes, mine. This is Otis Cavanaugh. Uh, hello? Hello? I hung up. Oh, Nick. And you heard what he said? Yes. Cavanaugh must have seen us come in. That must have been his face I saw at the window. Then he went somewhere in no, your box. Wait, wait, wait. What? Let me think. Yes. Of course. What is it? Come on. We've got to hurry. Where are we going? To try to find Otis Cavanaugh. I think I know where he is. Cavanaugh couldn't be down here in the cellar. You just talked to him on the phone. That wasn't Cavanaugh. That was... But how do you know it wasn't? Patsy, don't you remember how Otis Cavanaugh was billed as a concert singer? Yes, as a high society tenor. Well, is it likely that a man who had sung tenor could speak in a deep bass voice like the one we heard on the phone? Of course not. But that still doesn't prove that Cavanaugh's down here. Well, maybe it doesn't prove it, Patsy, but we're going to keep on looking. I have a feeling that we're going... Nick, listen. What's that? The door, the head of the cellar stairs. Someone's coming down. Yeah. Nick, I'm scared. Take it easy. Have you got your gun? I'm all set. Nick. I'm not positive, Patsy. But if my hunch is right, it's the murderer we've been looking for. Nick and Patsy wait tensely in the basement of the old Cavanaugh mansion while someone descends the cellar stairs. Whether or not it's the killer and who he is, we'll find out in just a minute. 
Now for the conclusion of the case of the hermit thrush. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Huddled closely together in the basement of the old Cavanaugh mansion, Nick and Patsy wait as someone slowly descends the stairs. Here he comes, Nick. Aren't you going to let him know we're here? I think he already knows it. Hello there. What? Why, it's not Otis Cavanaugh at all, Nick. It's Mr. Kelsey. Yes. Come on in, Kelsey. Oh, Mr. Carter. And Miss Bowen, too. <laughs> what in the world are you doing down here? We've been looking for Otis Cavanaugh. In the cellar? <laughs> I'm afraid you'll never find him here. <laughs> You're mistaken, Kelsey. You mean you found his grave? So he is buried down here. Yes. It... Nick, look out. He's got a gun. My hunch was right, eh, Kelsey? You and Eleanor Drew buried Cavanaugh down here 15 years ago. Knowing that won't do you any good now, Carter. Nick, please. He's got us covered. And I'm going to kill you both. I can't afford to have my secret known. That why you killed Miss Drew and Oliver Niles? You figure everything out, don't you? All right, I did kill them. Doesn't matter that you two know now, because neither one of you will live to testify against me. I'm not so sure of that, Kelsey. Okay, Sergeant Matheson, you can come out now. Here's your killer. Sergeant Matheson? Okay, Kelsey, go away, you go! That's oh. get his gun. Okay, Nick. Gosh, he's out cold. Oh, just the same, pick it up. Oh, gee. He sure fell for an old gag looking around when you call Sergeant Matheson, who isn't within five miles of this place. Oh, they do it nearly every <laughs> time. Now... Our next job is to get our murderous little friend here down to headquarters and have him booked for murder. Well, Nick, you were right. I got a complete confession from Leonard Kelsey. Good. Just as you figured, Nick, the whole story was a phony. Otis Cavanaugh never locked himself up in that house 15 years ago. He died 15 years ago. He did? Yeah. How? Apparently, it was a natural death, Patsy. But Kelsey, who was the executor of the Kavanaugh estate, saw a chance to keep on collecting Kavanaugh's large monthly annuity. That's right. But uh, where did Eleanor Drew come in? Well, Kelsey apparently needed her help. First, to bury Kavanaugh in the cellar after he died, and second, to maintain the fiction that Otis was alive all those years. Well, I still don't see why he killed Eleanor Drew. All right, I'll get back to that in just a minute. You see, Oliver Niles had been living in South America for 20 years. Yeah. So he, like everybody else, thought Kavanaugh was alive. But then when he returned to this country, Kelsey's game was threatened. He had to kill Niles. Uh, but the Drew dame wouldn't go for that. That's right. She probably figured that fraud was one thing, murder another. So they quarreled and Kelsey killed her. And he saw a perfect out for himself by claiming Kavanaugh killed her. All he had to do was murder Niles and identify Niles' body as Kavanaugh. Sure, yeah. that way the case would be closed, he thought. The reason he came to me was to be sure Niles' body would be found. Yeah, but uh, that telegram in the Drew woman's purse, didn't he know that would be found? Yeah, that's where he slipped up. Yeah, he probably thought she destroyed it. Yeah, and Kelsey was the only one who could have known we were headed for the tourist camp, wasn't he? That's right. And then there was that watch. It was the only identification in the cabin. Sure, Kelsey planted it there. And that's what made me ask myself why somebody wanted me to think that Otis Cavanaugh was dead. But what about that phone call, Nick? Why did Kelsey call you? Because if he succeeded in killing me, he wanted you to testify that I'd been threatened by Cavanaugh. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nick... I'll never forgive you for one thing. Why, what's that, Patsy? For not telling me that Otis was dead. And for not pointing out his grave in the cellar. I didn't find his grave. Yeah. Then that was all a bluff? Sure. Well, I thought I was right, but I didn't know. I had to get Kelsey uh, to tip his hand. Uh, of course, I'm sure Kavanaugh's grave is down there now. Yeah, but that... it is, Nick. We found it. Ah, good for you, Maddie. But, Patsy... Oh, what, Nick? Don't ever accuse me of holding out on you again. After all, you wouldn't be able to stand me if I were the kind of guy who knows everything all the time. <laughs> Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Ken Pettis and Lou Schofield. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.